So yeah, I want to talk about um, about input components, but I guess a little little bit of background. Um, my name is Daniel. I'm a solutions engineer here at Sanity. So uh, my role is often working with our uh, enterprise clients and uh, community clients to you know figure out how to get the best out of our uh, out of our platform. Um, and been having a, a lot of fun uh, playing around with uh, version three as it's been uh, going through the dev preview. Um, and one of the things I found early on was uh, a set of new um, features around basically wrapping up components and uh, kind of enhancing the existing components that you might have, uh, the ones that come with the studio, and uh, really, um, really giving you a lot of composable options. And I want to talk about real quick why uh, composability is important here. So if we think about um, you know, a content model for pets and we have input components, we have an input component for a name and for a breed and for a slogan. And maybe we start out with these as kind of just strings, right? Um, and that's pretty straightforward. And we'll, go, we'll look at the, what the schema for that looks like. Um, but then maybe you want to have a custom input component for um, the breed. Maybe you want to look it up against like an external API or something like that. Um, so you can do that, and we've seen you know custom input components in version two, and we've seen them in version three as well. Um, there's some great resources out there on how to how to build custom components, and of course that's a lot easier. And now you just you know you assign the custom input component to your uh, to your uh, field here in your in your content model, and you say okay yeah the breed is going to use this different input component. But what if you need to do something to all three of these? What if you want to say add a character count to all of them? Um, if you don't have composability, you have to uh, basically replace the functionality for the for the default strings, and then you also have to add that functionality into your custom uh, component. So you're really remaking you know two different components there. Uh, so what if you could instead of replacing those, just enhance them? What if you could wrap those uh, input components with additional functionality that does, you know, things like adding character counts or having additional buttons to insert special characters, things like that? Um, that's exactly what uh, this is. This um, ability uh, in the new Studio uh, version three gives you. Um, so really excited to uh, jump into some code here. So on the left-hand side, you can see I've built out this, this, um, this uh, pet schema. And it's a fairly basic schema. Um, we have here you know, some basic fields. We have the strings. Uh, I've given myself an options list. The only, pets I, the only dogs I know about are chihuahuas. So um, that's, that's all the options we have here. Um, and we have a few different fields. But they're all, you know, there's strings, there's text, there's uh, a a portable text field here for the biography. And we see a fairly standard um, form build out from that on the right hand side, right? So um, if you've been using Sanity uh, for a while, fairly, fairly straightforward, fairly uh, standard sort of things here. Now, if we want to add in a custom input, we can do that. And here now, now we know a lot more about a lot more breeds uh, because I've written the custom input and I've said, okay, instead of having you know this uh, this default text string input, I have my pet breed input here, and I have that as a as a little component, um, and it's basically just pulling in content from uh, the um, from an API. So there's a nice dog.ceo API, uh, gives you a list of breeds. I'm just pulling that in and giving myself a nice little dropdown. Really simple and straightforward to, to implement here uh, with version three. Um, but if we get into the meat of that, now I have a custom component here for my dropdown, and I have standard components here for my uh, name and my slogan. Um, if I want to add in a, a uh, a character count on all of these. Either I would have to write custom components that have, um, you know, just a string input for the name, and then I add some more logic onto my drop down, and um, you know, same for the same for the slogan. Um, but we actually have some ability to to actually wrap those. So I'm going to go into two basic concepts uh, and talk about two things here. Uh, first is kind of looking at plugins. And the second one is um, looking at how these wrappers work. So a plugin in version three is basically just a set of configuration. So a set of configuration in this case for my plugin is just going to be 
the name of the plugin, and then some special logic that we'll get into about rendering the form. And so I define this using the create plugin function, and then I'm just going to add that into my Sandy config up at the top level. So um, a default configuration here will look like a desk tool, and here I'm adding in my text stats plugin. So again, a, a plugin in version three is just a subset of um, of a of a configuration, which makes it really possible to compose things together and build out your own uh, plugins um, that you can reuse between projects. You can you just um, you know isolate functionality, um, and this is a key part of making you know, a composable uh, content editing experience. So in this plugin, um, we are only doing one thing, and we're providing a what's called a render input function. And this render input function is really the key here, because what it is doing is every time uh, the studio is rendering a field, it's going to call this function. And this function is going to tell the studio what to render. Um, and by default, um, you know, the, this is handled internally to the studio. But if you want to you know, provide your own function here, um, you can do so. And so this function will look something like this. So down at the bottom, I have the function, the render text stats. I'm getting props, which tells us you know, some of the information about the uh, component and about the uh, field itself, and a next function. And the next function is really special because what's going to happen there is whenever I call that, that's just going to wrap what you know, call and render whatever um, functionality would happen there by default otherwise. So this is where we are able to start wrapping existing uh, components. Again, the studio is calling for every uh, component in every field that uh, we show. Um, it's going to call this render text stats function. And then we're going to wrap, um, our, wrap our, um, our field in our input with our own custom uh, component here. So this text stacks component then is just a React component. I'm just passing it some information, the ID of the field and the, um, and the children, which in this case will just be the next, will be the uh, further components that are going to be rendered. And what I'm doing here is I'm just highlighting you know, that there's a wrapper and showing you where the wrapper is around the input component and the ID showing you the name of the field. And you'll notice there's a special one here, root. So you can actually wrap the entire form here if you want. Um, so you can wrap the entire form. You can wrap the you know a single field. Uh, if we were showing objects, you'd be able to wrap the individual items within objects. Any input field from the uh, root on down will get wrapped. So it can be really powerful. So moving on from there, um, what if we you know all we want to do is wrap the text component. So we don't need that root uh, component wrapped. We don't need to wrap you know things that aren't text components. So the thing that we do then in our render logic here is say, OK, um, in our render text stats function, we're going to say if the um, schema type is text or string, so if it's a text field or a string field, uh, then we're going to wrap it. And we're going to return our stack text stats component wrapped around the default you know, input component. Um, but if it's not that, then we're just going to call next. And the studio will go on its merry way and just uh, just continue rendering out the input components. So that's the main change there, right? We've, we've started narrowing down within our plugin what we're going to apply to. So now you could take this plugin and apply it in any studio, and it would just wrap all the string and text inputs, right? Moving through to the next step, what if we want to do something maybe a little bit useful? So you know, I had the, those, uh, those boxes on it just to kind of give you an idea of what parts are being replaced and where the wrapper is. But you know, this is a really simple example. Um, what we're doing here is just getting the length, getting the, the length of the, um, of the value um, of that field and putting it out into a text um, component beneath the actual input component. So now I have a very useful component that is wrapping things. And I don't have to touch the default text editor. I don't have to touch my custom component. I don't have to touch you know, the, the other text editor. I don't have to have a different version for uh, the text input versus the string input versus my custom input. It's all the same thing. It's completely composable. So I can add this to anything that is a string value, right? So this makes it um, you know, really possible. What if I want to have a plugin that does you know, word counts instead of character counts? What if I want to have you know, other plugins that, that do different things on my, on my string fields? Um, 
I don't have to kind of have a mega component that does all the things. Um, I can have very specific components that do these things, and then they can compose together to give me the experience that I want. So one further extension here is, what if I don't want this to be on every string, right? My plugin there is just, you, you say, as soon as I get my plugin, it's going to apply itself to all the strings and all the text boxes. What if I don't want that? Well, one neat thing is when you uh, add in some options here, so every field can have options, you can start to add your own custom options here. And this is uh, giving me the red squiggles because I haven't updated the TypeScript uh, definitions, but you can do that. Um, and I'm basically adding the, a character count true option here. So now I can opt in. So I can provide a plugin that will wrap any string or text field, and I can opt into it in my schema so that I show it only in the places where I want it. So I don't care about it in the name, right? Like the name's the name, it's gonna be short, it's gonna be long, whatever. Um, the slogan, maybe I care about. And the breed, um, I don't wanna know if I have a really long breed here. Um, so we have some, some ability to provide some options here. And if I look at my uh, component over on the, on the, over on the other side, um, the logic that I've added here is in addition to selecting whether it's the, you know, a text or uh, string field, I'm also seeing if the character count uh, property is in the options for that schema type. So again, this props um, object that's coming through is giving me all the information about the field that is being rendered. So I can respond to options, I can respond to different things that are configured on the field um, and conditionally return my wrapper or not. Uh, so it gives you a lot of a lot of power there. Now, finally, um, what if we want to handle this portable text field too? So at the bottom, uh, you saw probably saw that I have this biography, which is just a standard portable text field. Um, this gets a little bit more complicated, but it's not a ton more complicated, and it's a lot easier to add it, you know, as logic here to a component that's about character count than it is to have, say, a portable text character count component versus a string character count component, um, or you know, to add it on as a as a custom component in each of these spots. Right? The functionality of this plugin is about character count, so let's make it work in all the places that it makes sense to have it. So now I'm doing two things. Um, one is I've broken out into a couple little functions, um, some logic to determine is it a string or text field or is it a portable text field? Um, and then uh, based on that, if it's either those and the character count is enabled, uh, then I do some further logic to get the text value, right? Um, if it is a portable text field, so if it is portable text, then I'm gonna use another helper function to just strip out the plain text out of that portable text field. Um, otherwise, I'm just gonna use the raw value of the string. And then I'm gonna pass that value into my wrapper component. So again, I can do all this outside of the portable text component, outside of the input component. Um, and the actual rendering of this, uh, you know, the React component here hasn't changed at all. I've just changed a little bit of the logic of how I'm selecting to show it and how I'm getting the values to show it. Um, and so the, the helper functions look a little bit like this. Um, and this will be, this is on the GitHub repo. I'll post in the chat here in a second so you can get more into the details of what this looks like. Um, but it's really, you know, for the functionality and the complexity and the optionality that this gives you, um, really uh, quite straightforward. So yeah, that is kind of the, one of the neat, neatest things that I've seen in the in this V3 uh, world, and that's kind of hard to say because there's a lot of neat things. But I think you know the idea that you can really, um, really compose these different things together in a uh, meaningful and you know useful way um, that you don't have to you know put everything into a mega component or to pull things together in a um, in a you know, into separate components like that, um, I think is really, really, really powerful. So um, this is, uh, yeah, one of my favorite things. So excited to see uh, what's in the questions. What do we got? Yeah, great demo. Thank you so much for showing that. Um, I have a question. Is this even possible in B2 or would it be almost impossible there are some ways that i've seen it done <laughs> let's put it that way um there, there are ways that you could do it 
Um, there are ways, there's definitely, like the in version two, part of the way that the studio works, there is a component that's there that can basically render um, the rest of the uh, components. Um, it's not as streamlined, it's not as obvious, um, and it's not quite as composable as this. So um, this is this makes building things as plugins a lot simpler. Uh, you would still have to use a custom component in each spot that you want to use it versus this just being something where you can add an option. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it, some of those things are possible, but not, to the, not nearly to the same extent. I see. Yeah, we got a comment in the in the meetup uh, channel here. It, not possible in less than fifty lines of code, which that is uh, definitely true. <laughs> lines up n neatly with my question because I have tried to write some custom input components in V two, and there was a lot of more code in those. How yeah. how come these code examples are so short? Um, You're even the... using TypeScript, which is supposed to be you know. <laughs> yeah, well. Um, how are they so short? It's because, um, you know, in the way that the, that the API is set up for, for wrapping, right? I'm only needing to pay attention to the specific things that I need to pay attention to, right? Um, even, and this is even true for uh, when you're writing a custom component itself, it's not wrapping other components, but when you're writing the core custom input, that's also shorter now because a lot of those things like presence and uh, history and things like that are all abstracted away for you now. Uh, in a much cleaner way. But these are so short because literally all I have to do is focus on the functionality that I care about, which is showing a low number <laughs> at the bottom of a field, right? Um, and that's all. I don't have to care about what's in the middle, right? Um, so it's it becomes really, really powerful. That's awesome. I'm super excited for this part of Vtree for sure. Uh, thank you so much, Daniel. There's uh, there's a lot of uh, cheering in the, in the Slack, so... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm going to post the uh, the uh, the repo right now, so you can all dig in at things uh, that might have flown through and really see how see how this all works. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you again. Thanks, and thanks, Daniel. Remember, you can find Daniel and Holt and the rest of the Sent team in uh, our Slack community at slack.senti.io.